If you are looking for the experience of a lifetime, climbing Mount Kilimanjaro should be one of the things that's on your life list. As one of the seven summits and the tallest mountain in Africa, there is not much that is not known about Mount Kilimanjaro. At 19,341 feet, it is the largest freestanding mountain in the world and is a dormant stratovolcano. While the peak remains covered in snow and ice during portions of the year, since 1912, the mountain has actually lost 82% of its ice cap and since 1962 has lost 55% of its glaciers. While the mountain was first summited by Hans Meyer in 1889, today over 30,000 people a year try to make the summit with only about half succeeding. Currently, there are seven established climbing routes. The Marengo route, the Mashame route, the Lamosho route, the Shiro route, the Rangai, the Northern Circuit, and the Umbebe, out of which the most popular is the Marangu route, or as it is commonly known, the Coca-Cola route. Coming up the west flank of the mountain, the Lamosho route is considered the most scenic route on the mountain and can be done in about six to eight days. In 2018, when I climbed Kilimanjaro, I took seven days on this route, and it was an amazing experience that I'll cover day by day in this video. So if you're interested in climbing the mountain or seeing what the experience is like, let's hit the trail. The first day. Chances are that if you want to climb Kilimanjaro, you live outside Tanzania, where the mountain is located. For most people, the journey to Tanzania is a great experience in itself that ends in Moshi, the nearest town and base for most guide services leading climbs up the mountain. From Moshi, the first day of any trek on the Lamosho route has a great deal of travel time to the national park, where one's guide services register and weigh out the gear for the ascent of the peak. While this first day involves a lot of waiting, this is a part of the alpine mountaineering experience, a great opportunity to bond with fellow climbers and your guides to prepare for the next six days on the mountain. Once the registration is completed, the trek begins at the Landrosi Gate, some 7,000 feet in elevation, and winds through the scenic rainforest to Big Trees Camp, some four miles away, and some 1,700 feet of elevation gain. During this time, climbers will get their first taste of what's known as pole pole, meaning slowly, slowly, the pacing that most operators prefer to ensure that their clients reach the summit. Similarly, once you arrive at Big Trees Camp, most operators will graciously welcome their clients with a song. Let's take a look at the first day. The second day, hopefully one is well rested from the short day before because on this seven day trek, this day is one of the longest, with slightly over 10 miles of hiking to the Shira 2 camp. Climbers on the eight day route will split the distance in half stopping at Shira 1 on the second day before continuing on to Shira 2 on the third day. But on the seven day, this 10 miles, 
the climbers will ascend over 3,000 feet of elevation and pass through the remainder of the rainforest zone before ascending into the moorland and into the low alpine zone. For much of the day and in the distance, climbers will be on the Shira Plateau, an exposed stretch of ground with amazing views of Cathedral Peak and, of course, Kilimanjaro. At the end of the day, you'll stop for the night at Shira 2, some 11,800 feet of elevation. Day three, no matter what route one takes, the goal of every climber is to acclimatize over the course of their trip on Kilimanjaro. On the Lamosho route, elevation gradually increases over the climb with forays into higher elevations to see how the body responds. Day three is the first of those ascents with most of the day spent heading up to the lava tower for lunch, a prominent point that is located some 13,800 feet above sea level. After lunch, the group will head down to the Barranco camp, where the Lamosho route intersects with the Makame route. Despite all the climbing up to the lava tower and then back down, there is actually only 600 feet or so of elevation gain during this day. Let's take a look.
day four. Immediately out of the gate, on the fourth day, climbers will face a challenge. The infamous Barenko Wall, a section of the route that is some class four terrain that involves some scrambling uphill. The payoff for this section of the route are some first class views of the summit now seemingly within reach. The remainder of the day is spent covering some mostly flat terrain to Karenga Camp. Although just before camp, there's a steep descent into a valley and a steep ascent into camp. Despite all the up and down nature of day four, all of this trekking covers three miles of distance and allows plenty of time to rest for that noted acclimatization. Let's take a look. Day five. While well, one of the shortest days in terms of distance, the route from Karenga to Barafu, otherwise known as Base Camp, gains over 2,000 feet of elevation, most of it in two sections, at the beginning of the day and at the end of the day. During the bulk of this hike across high alpine terrain, the summit looms over the climbers closer and yet farther than ever. Base camp itself is a really interesting place. Tents placed on ledges, multiple groups coming and going, and fantastic views in every direction. With the summit pushed the next day, it is hard to rest, even though there is plenty of time to, at over 14,000 feet of elevation. Day six, summit day. Depending on one's guides, group, and various other factors, a determination will be made on when to leave for the summit, either late at night on day five or early in the morning on day six. Either way, the climb proceeds up the snow and ice covered last section of the mountain under high stars, cold winds, and steep terrain. 
At some point, it is inescapable that your summit team will either fall in line or pass other groups seeking to attain the same goal with varying degrees of success. Up in this zone, many groups drop out because of altitude or other issues. For those who have the energy and the skill, there is the potential for a great sunrise view at Stella Point slightly above 18,000 feet. From Stella Point, it is a short but long distance to Uhuru Peak, the summit of Kilimanjaro. At the summit, the views are sublime and time for the obligatory summit photo before one heads back down to Stella Point and then down the steep slopes back to Barafu Camp. Most groups at this point elect to have a climber's rest for a slight bit, but this is also dependent on one's starting time and overall group speed. After a rest, or perhaps not, the end result of the day is to descend to Maweka Camp. The last two miles of this trek on day six feel like some of the longest miles ever conceived, and it is a very long day. Day seven, the last day of your trek. After what was likely a solid, exhausted sleep, all of the groups covered the fastest six miles on the whole trek, descending down through the rainforest some 4,600 feet to Maweka Gate, where successful climbers begin their celebrations of the summit and their safe descent back down to Moshi and where you came from. Let's take a look. Rumble. Woo. Yeah. Rumble Wakari 
Hakuna matata Shiratu alifika Hakuna matata Malava wakapita Hakuna matata Karanko alifika Hakuna matata Karanga tulifika Hakuna matata Barafu walienda Hakuna matata Uhuru wakapika Hakuna matata Jambo Jambo kwana Habari gani Mzuri sana Wageni Wakaribishwa Kilimanjaro Hakuna matata Na leo ni imweka Hakuna matata Badae ni mjini Hakuna matata Wabanana wakapige Hakuna matata Wabia wakaonje Hakuna matata Wabomba wakachanje Hakuna matata Wabiruku wakapige Hakuna matata Jambo Jambo kwana Habari gani Mzuri sana Wageni wakaridishwa Kilimanjaro hakuna matata Kilimanjaro 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 As you can see from the video, climbing Kilimanjaro is an amazing experience from traveling to a distant land to participating in a grueling physical challenge and seeing one-of-a-kind scenery. Whether one makes the summit or does not, it is the experience of a lifetime. Even though each climber summits the peak based on their own skill, it is important to recognize the other parties that made such an ascent possible. In my case, my climbing team and my wife who pushed me to do it. However, there's also another group that made your success possible, your guide service, including the guides, porters, and other support staff. While traditional alpine mountaineering in this vein has somewhat gone out of style in 2019 and in years in the future, the fact remains that anyone who summits Kilimanjaro has relied heavily on their guides and teams to do so. As such, one's guide service should not only be treated well during the trek, but compensated well and fairly as they are your partners in the climb and stewards of the land who will be returning to the mountain long after you the climber have left. When I went to Keeley, I went with the Top Climbers Expedition, who was an amazing outfit and whom I would highly recommend. No matter who you go with, be sure to respect your guide skills and profession, the land, and enjoy every moment of what occurs. Because in the end, all you will have is the memories of the successful climb you made. And probably if you're from America, you'll be thinking of years past. You'll miss the rains down in Africa too. Thanks for watching. Leave any comments about Kilimanjaro below.